Let's have a conversation around training team members. I'm talking in associates or CAs. Teaching them and training them is, can be very, very difficult. It's one of the hardest things that anybody has to do, but it's so important if you really want to leverage why they're there in the first place. Because let's face it, having a team member, a CA or an associate is to help you leverage and scale your practice to get you closer to your dream of a profit practice or a freedom practice, right? Most likely freedom. So therefore, we got to do it properly, but everybody does it wrong. In this video, I'm going to show you why everybody does it wrong and how to correct it. So let's get right on to the show. Hey everybody, I'm Lawrence Tam here from Your Cairo Coach. We're here to talking about helping you build your practice towards a profit practice and of course a freedom practice. Now, why do we need to do that? And because obviously our goal is in business and in life is to be able to help you elevate, create more freedom time, freedom and time and money, income, independence and impact, right? If you want to do that, it's hard to do that on your own. So you need a team and a team member requires, you know, that could be a CA, it could be an associate or whoever it is. You need to just get them to come to you and you got to train them. Why is it so hard to train them? Well, because first of all, that you not only have to train them, you also have to get them engaged into your vision of what you're trying to build. And you also need to kind of figure out how to integrate them to your culture, right with the rest of the team. And then but most of the time, most people focus on the training, right training. And the thing is that I see in the most the biggest mistake that most people make around training is that they teach them the how, which means which what I mean by that is that they teach them exactly how to do their job right? They never really focus in on another component, which I'll get to in a second. And the how is like, okay, how do you do this? How do you answer the phone? How do you make a recall? How do you book an appointment? How do you take money? You teach them the how, or how do you do a report of findings? How do you do initial consultation? You teach them the how. That's helpful, but that's only half the picture. If you don't teach them half the picture, then of course, they're not going to follow through. Why? Because let's face it, no matter even if I give you a script, word for word, exactly what to do and what to say in an initial consultation report of findings, uh, you know, how to answer the phone, how to book an appointment, what to say when there's an objection, I can give you all that script, you memorize it to the T word for word, I guarantee you, right, that the CA or the associate or even you will not do it exactly the way I do it. You're not going to do it, you'll never do the same way either. And I guarantee you, you're not gonna get the same results I get. Why? Because you're not me. And so the fundamental thing that most people are missing is they're missing the why. Right. So I have a saying in, in what I teach in my initial clients is why before how, right? How is important. I'm not saying negating that part. Of course, you need to do that, but you need to explain the why. Why is so important? Why is that so important? <laughs> Let me explain. Because when you explain the why you do something first, it gives context. It creates a context for, for your, your training um, to whoever you're teaching. Let's say as an associate, it teaches them why you're actually going to be saying these things. Because you only tell them exactly what to say without any context, they don't have the flexibility to actually make uh, adaptability to that language or the words or enthusiasm or changing the word and the tone and the speed to match the reason why. The thing is, if you want to just have uh, like McDonald's, you know, having people to follow your instructions exactly, you know, the exact every every uh, burger is exactly the same way and have that consistency. Sure, that's great. But the problem is we're dealing with human beings, we're not making burgers, right? We're dealing with human beings, which means that we are constantly, constantly trying to adapt. And we need to listen and we need to adapt to each situation and to each person. And so therefore, a script only gets you so far. What you need to do is you want to hire well, first of all, right? Before training, you should be hiring well. You should be hiring someone super intelligent, who's smart, who's adaptable and friendly and can change on the fly because what you ultimately want is someone who's able to adapt to the situation and utilize their brain, right? And to utilize, to get them to figure out exactly what to say and what to do in that given moment. That's what you're hiring them for, right? Because we're in the people business, we're in the service business, we're not in a product business. And so therefore, when you start training, what you want to do is explain the why. So for a CA, you might go, hey, listen, this is what we do. This is why we do recalls, right? The re recall isn't just to get patients back, right? There's a reason for that. The reason why is because when we get, when that patient comes back, right, they stay under care, they get better. Because if we don't get them back, they're not going to get better. They're going to blame us that chiropractic doesn't work. For an associate, you might say, you know, the reason why we actually do uh, these report of findings and do we do it this way is because the reason why we do that is because we want to help them understand that this is a choice, that chiropractic is a choice. We're not forcing people on this. See, now they have, an, if they understand the intention, now at least they have the ability to be able to kind of change a couple of words or change the tonality and maybe expression, find another way to express that. 
because human communication isn't about a script and being a robot. No one wants a sales robot. Everybody wants an ability to be able to have that autonomy to make that those changes. And this is what, why before how is so important in your training. You most people forget the why they just teach the how and end up, you know, going through the two week training or whatever they do, just focusing on hows, and it, it just leads to disaster. So the goal here is simple. You need to under, help them understand why before every act how. And if you can do that, if you can teach every CA, every associate, every team member doing the understanding the intention behind everything that you do, then you might actually have a chance. You might actually have a chance of having a staff member to be a, a, a team member that actually is a star player, because now they actually have a chance to be able to go, okay, this is what they ultimately want. And this is what we're going to be able to do. What do we do it this way? Wouldn't it be great if a team member said to you, so have you ever considered saying it this way, or maybe doing it this way instead? Because if, that, if this is what we ultimately want, what happens if we do that? That changed the game, right? And this is why it's so important to focus on the why, not how. And these are the small little communication, 1% communication that ultimately changes everything. You're hired a staff, you hired an associate, you hired a CA, for what purpose? To help you grow your practice. Why? Because you're trying to get to increase profitability in your practice, inc increasing your income, you want to create some more freedom, which is the independence, and you want to create more impact in your community. That's why we do what that's why we do what we do, right? And therefore, leveraging other people to help you do that, buy into that vision is so important. So teach them the why, teach them the intention, teach them more than just the how, when you can do that, you can literally change the game. So I hope this has been helpful to you. If you enjoyed this, comment below, like this video, share this with others, because I think they need to hear this message because it's such an important thing. If we are able to train more people to have better team members, we can literally change the profession and change practices and how practices are done. And we might actually have to make a difference to helping more people. So if you want more help, you want to consider understanding and help you understand your, help your team to become more profitable practice or freedom practice, give me a shout, uh, send me a message and go to joinnitro.com. I'll see you set up a conversation there. We'll talk to you soon. Hi, my name is Dr. Rachel Swan. I have been in practice for about 18 years now. Most of that time I've been on the Central Coast, just north of Sydney. I was about 12 months ago because I wanted to be with a group of like-minded people that would help take my practice into the next phase, uh, which was to build more of a community feel. And so far it's been fantastic. Uh, so for me, I think the biggest thing is that I've been able to, I've had lots of stuff in my own personal life in the last 12 months and so um, it's allowed me to deal with that, um, keep my practice running um, and quite successfully. I've been out of the practice quite a bit and haven't been as engaged, um, but um, having that support from Lawrence and the, and the um, other members has been um, amazing. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just allowed me to um, to look after those aspects of life while still having a practice to come back to. Uh, and it's just lowered the stress levels and um, just knowing that I've had that support. Big picture, you know, we often t tell our patients that they've got to strive for that balance between, you know, their work life and their, their family and their home. And, you know, um, and I paid a lot of lip service to it before. Um, you know, it was very much sort of nothing to see here and everything's fine, where, you know, it, it clearly wasn't. So I feel like I've been a lot more congruent with you, um, that I'm actually embodying those values that I, I think are important. Um, and I think it's important for patients to be able to see that, um, that as well. I just think it's the best expression of myself. You know, I, um, I want to be able to live, live my values. Um, and I felt like that, um, you know, I was to a point, but it's just enabling me to express, you know, more of myself and hopefully, you know, inspire other people to, to you know, make some shifts as well. I think the reason I joined was because I was feeling a bit isolated in practice and um, I wanted to be part of, you know, a group or a tribe, if you like, of people that thought like me and that inspired me and pushed me a little bit. Um, it, it started a course of um, a normal, enormous personal growth. You know, I've, I've had practice growth over time and, it, and certainly it's helped my practice growth. Um, but it was sort of the catalyst for that personal um, growth and just coming to different people and it would be just like, you know, something so small and insignificant someone would say and um, it, that one thing has led to an enormous shift in 
oh, I can't even, you know, I can't even tell you how, how big it's been and, and how many areas of my life it's affected. So 